Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 16th of April. Reading evening prayer for Easter season from the Church of England's Common Worship. You'll find the words in Common Worship daily prayer, morning and evening prayer during the seasons. Online at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, downloadable as an app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, or by Zoom, same times. Zoom codes are on the Blind Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will be on my Dominic Global YouTube channel presently. If you are following in the book, it's commemoration only, so not much adjustment to the standard evening prayer Easter season provision. 16th of April, halfway through Saints Days and Festivals, for more information about uh, adjustments for Isabella Gilmore. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of his darkness into his marvellous light, may our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The full of Chartres hymn. Choirs of New Jerusalem, your sweetest notes employ the paschal victory to him in strains of holy joy. How Judah's line burst his chains and crushed the serpent's head, and brought with him from death's domains the long-imprisoned dead. Triumphant in his glory, now his scepter ruleth all, earth, heaven, and hell before him bow and at his footstool fall. While joyful thus his praise we sing, his mercy we implore, into his palace bright to bring and keep us evermore. All glory to the fa- Father be, all glory to the Son. All glory, Holy Ghost, to thee while endless ages run. Hallelujah. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. He appointed Psalm early this evening, number 71. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. Psalm 71. O God, be not far from me. In you, O Lord, do I seek refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be for me a stronghold to which I may ever resort. Send out to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence even from my youth. Upon you have I leaned from my birth when you drew me from my mother's womb. My praise shall be always of you. I have become a poor tent to many, but you are my refuge and my strength. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Do not cast me away in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength fails. For my enemies are talking against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him and take him, because there is none to deliver him. O God, be not far from me. Come quickly to help me, O my God. Let those who are against me be put to shame and disgrace. Let those who seek to do me evil be covered with scorn and reproach. But as for me, I will hope continually, and will praise you more and more. My mouth shall tell of your righteousness and salvation all the day long, for I know no end of the telling. I will begin with the mighty works of the Lord God. I will recall your righteousness, yours alone. O God, you have taught me me since since I was young, and to this day I tell of your wonderful works. Forsake me not, O God, when I am old and grey-headed. 
that I make known your deeds to the next generation and your power to all that are to come. Your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. In the great things you have done, who is like you, O God? What troubles and adversities you have shown me, and yet you will turn and refresh me and bring me from the deep of the earth again. Increase my honour, turn again and comfort me. Therefore will I praise you upon the harp for your faithfulness, O my God. I will sing to you with the lyre, O Holy One of Israel. My lips will sing out as I play to you, and so my soul which you have and so will my soul which you have redeemed. My tongue also will tell of your righteousness all the day long, for they shall be shamed and disgraced who sought to do me evil. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O God, be not far from me. The Canticle, a Song of Faith. Scroll onto it. If you're following electronically, turn back to it. Evening prayer, Easter, in the book. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you. You are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. You are ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him you have confidence in God who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. A reading from the writings of Isabella Gilmore. God has placed us in the world and we are to work for it and in it. We can make our secular work full of his spirit and we can make what we call our spiritual work full of the spirit of the world if we will. If Christ is not in us, we are nothing and can do nothing. If he is, then we can go on in peace and quietness, not troubling, rejoicing that work was given us full and running over, more than we could ever do, and that he blessed us in it, gave us love and gratitude beyond our deserts. We must teach but not argue against people's belief. Let them talk. If they abuse the church, as they often do at first acquaintance, silence will stop them far more quickly than words. Get them to talk of something they do love, then talk to them of Jesus. I think myself the secret of all true work is knowledge of those for whom we work, and this takes so long to get and means such a single-hearted diligence. To go visiting with your heart up in the cloud or elsewhere is useless. You had better stay away. To go thinking you are going to teach is just as useless. But to go as a friend, who can tell where your influence shall cease? Deuteronomy 5 from 22, our first Bible reading. Deuteronomy, the fifth book of the Hebrew Scriptures. So if you've got a Bible with both covenants in it in front of you, opening to the beginning and after Genesis, Exodus, uh, Leviticus, etc., you'll find Deuteronomy. Book of Deuteronomy, large number five in the margin, head of the paragraph, chapter five, book of Deuteronomy. And the small numbers in the text of the verses are going from 22 to the end. Deuteronomy, chapter five, verse 22. Scroll on to it if you're back to it from the canticle if you are following online. These words that the Lord spoke with a loud voice to your whole assembly at the mountains, out of the fire, the cloud, and the thick darkness, and he added no more. He wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. When you heard the voice out of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you approached me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders, and you said, Look, the Lord your God has shown us his glory and greatness. We have heard his voice out of the fire. Today we have seen that God may speak to someone and the person may still live. So now why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer, we shall die. For who is there of all flesh that has heard the voice of the living God speaking out of the of fire as we have it remained alive? Go near you yourself and hear all that the Lord our God will say. Tell us everything that the Lord our God tells you and we will listen and do it. The Lord heard your words when you spoke to me and the Lord said to me, I have heard the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They are right in all that they have spoken. If only they had such a mind as this to fear me and to keep all my commandments always so that it might go well with them and with their children forever. Go, say to them, return to your tents, but you stand here by me, and I will tell you all the commandments, the tactics, the ordinances that you shall teach them, so that they may do them in the land that I am giving them to possess. You must therefore be careful to do as the Lord your God has commanded you. You shall not turn to the right or to the left. You must follow exactly the path that the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live, and that it may go well with you, and that you may live long in the land you are to possess.
So the story of God's people coming out of slavery, possibly an oral tradition, but uh, most academics think it's almost certainly penned and uh, formalised on their coming out of exile, returning to the promised land. And you can see why it would be useful for the leaders of God's people, spiritual and temporal, to uh, have these um, myths, legend, rehearsed in front of the people that they had charge of coming out of exile, because there are very great similarities. Moses telling God's people they're to live right when they go into the promised land coming out of slavery, uh, and that God's people disobeyed. God's people obeyed when they disobeyed, things went badly for them. When they obeyed, things went well. As they followed Moses' instructions, speaking God's name. One can imagine people coming out of um, Babylon, out of exile, saying, well, why should we listen to you? And if the spiritual and religious leaders had a story like this, Moses actually went up into the mountain, God spoke the word directly to God's people, and wrote them on stones and gave them to Moses to take the people. But God's people said, we can't hear the voice of God directly ourselves and live, therefore you must act as a go-between as a prophet. And so therefore the people uh, in charge of uh, the Hebrews coming out of uh, exile could say to them, well, we are speaking to you God's words, they are God's words, but you, if you were to hear God's words directly, you would die. That's why God has used us, chosen us as intermediaries to speak to you of him. But it's as if God is speaking. And this would be a very good story to refer back to, to encourage people to hear the words of their temporal and spiritual leaders, as it were, as God's words, and not to gainsay their leadership. And if they do listen and heed the words of their leaders, whether coming out of slavery or out of exile, God's promise is that God will be with them, they will live long in the land that God is giving them. This is the particular land, this is the promised land over which there is this fighting in our own day. Uh, but for us as Christians, I would suggest we have the freedom to interpret this uh, metaphorically and say whatever it is that God has called us to love and to hope for and our ambition and our hopes and our aims, God will give that to us if we follow God's example, rule and law. And we will dwell long in it. Ephesians 1 from 15, our next reading, scroll onto it online. If you're following the Bible, Ephesians um, comes after the Gospels, Acts and uh, is it in Romans and first like third Corinthians? Um, there's a little set of books written to um, small congregations before the set of books written by or to named individuals. And they follow the uh, A E I O U. Um, I was going to call it a mnemonic, I'm not sure whether that's quite right. But after Galatians, we have Ephesians in that little section, uh, perhaps about halfway through the last third of your Bible. Greek or Christian scriptures makes up the last third. So we're looking at the book of Ephesians, using the text if it doesn't fall open for you. Book of Ephesians, we're looking for the large number one in the margin, chapter one in the book of Ephesians. And within chapter one, we're looking for the verses 15 to the end, verses the small numbers in the text. Hello. So Ephesians chapter one from 15. Scroll on to it if you're following online. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. So just in our first reading, God's people coming out of uh, exile and or slavery, a new life. It works well for us as a church reading these stories now in Easter, living with the prospect of God being alive rather than dead. This letter written by Paul to the Christians uh, from Jewish and Greek background in Ephesus. Similarly, they're opening a new way of life for them as individuals, but also as community. And uh, therefore he is encouraging them in the fullness of all that they have uh, come into as they have been baptised and filled with the Spirit and uh, started to meet and worship together. And... Reading between the lines, one can infer that, for example, they might be being persecuted. But God has put his power in Jesus, who is, has been uh, seated at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule, authority and power. 
So whilst for the time being we might find ourselves at the mercy of, I don't know, bank managers, bosses, um, landlords, um, the system. We are to be encouraged as we hear this. Today is this written by Paul to the Ephesians. They're persecuted on account of their faith. We might just be because we're poor and excluded. But God is over and above all that. Uh, he's called for, Paul calls for the people to whom he is writing that uh, God will give them a spirit of wisdom and understanding so that their eyes might be enlightened and know the hope which is ahead of them. It's very easy for us in our circumstances in everyday life with sickness or with responsibility um, to be overwhelmed by their, the evident vision or view of those uh, within our ambit. But if we are reminded to look, say, to the horizon or to the stars or to the, the sunset or the rainbow, we take our eyes off the immediate concern and that might give us a hope and a joy and an enthusiasm and a persistence to press on and so that is kind of what uh, Paul is hoping for here as he writes the Jewish and Gentile background people experiencing persecution from their own communities and families from the state and the insecurities of their newfound faith so to the responsory back in evening prayer during Easter the Lord is my strength and my song he has become my salvation the Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. He has become my salvation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. The Song of Mary. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. Father, Son, Spirit, three in one, one in three. We thank you for this past day and all those things that have been good about it, where we've had good news, where we've been pleased with jobs and tasks we've done at home or at work, where people have been kind and grateful and thankful towards us, where we've perhaps known your presence, your healing, your provision, where we've enjoyed peace and quiet, where activity that has been fulfilling, creativity, our own or that of others, lessons learned, where we felt good about ourselves and good being alive. We thank you for those experiences and pray that will be an inspiration to see us through the night and into tomorrow. We also look back over the day, however, and recognise there might have been times and moments where we have felt otherwise excluded and broken, hurting and overwhelmed by our responsibilities towards ourselves, our family, our community. Maybe our job is mundane, monotonous, relentless. We may have had bad news, we may have struggled with pain and addiction. We may be worrying about money, whatever it is, our, our children, our parents. So we come to you, that's been our lot today, praying for your healing, your provision, your encouragement, your protection. Release international prayers for India. We pray for those who have been displaced by violence in Manipur since May last year, <clears throat> and that the members of the more than 550 churches which were destroyed can still find ways to worship and fellowship together. Pray that God will heal their continuing trauma. Turning to Christian aid. Pray for women like Maria who are breaking down barriers through beekeeping. Don't know any more than that. Church of England prayers for the Holy Land serialised throughout the week. God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for all who suffer in the Holy Land today. Your precious children, Israelis and Palestinian, traumatised and in fear for their lives. For the families of the bereaved, for those who have seen Im images they will never forget. For those anxiously waiting for news, despairing with each passing day. The Joint Public Issues Team prayer for Ukraine. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. Suffolk Darcy, we pray for Martin and Mike, our bishops. Martin, as he uh, retires and prepares for that, um, may everything that he's um, wanted to achieve in that transition fall into place. We pray for those 
you are sorting out uh, his replacement with vacancy in C committees nationally and locally. Pray that we will find somebody who is pro parish, pro stipendiary priest, and has the strength and connection to make that work within this diocese. Pray for Mike stepping up meanwhile, and uh, Archdeacon Rich having been on holiday, involved with the family marriage of his daughter. <coughs> will be with us on uh, Saturday for our St George's Parade. Thank you for him and his ministry. We pray that you sustain and uphold him in that. Pray for Josh, our uh, rural dean, as uh, he adjusts that role, moving on from it potentially, and um, praying for his successor, if that is me. Pray your blessing of uh, ability and uh, space and uh, fruitfulness, depending on who and what and where. But whoever it is, we pray that for them. And we pray that uh, you will give... Josh, peace of mind as he, you uh, reveal to him where and how he should serve you. We pray for him and his family and that he'll be sustained and empowered and enabled and be a blessing to those he serves. With uh, our day-by-day diocesan and diary, we're invited to pray for the Badwell of Walsham parishes currently in vacancy. <coughs> we pray for their um, wardens, treasurer and secretaries in general, but also those who are involved in particular in um, recruiting their new um, incumbent. <coughs> we pray for um, their rural dean and uh, clergy uh, readers, elders, ministers in that patch who are stepping up uh, in the vacancy. We pray that it would be time of consolidation of friendship, relationship, of uh, vision, of idea, of aim, ambition, and that when the new person passes by, there's an obvious click connection and they get into gear quickly to move on. Pray for our hospitals and hospices, staff, patients and visitors, also chaplains. Uh, we pray for provision financially, in terms of kit, staff and training, terms and conditions, that they may be places that are health-giving to all who are involved with them. And we are reminded as we pray for um, international concerns that the flooding caused by heavy rain in Burundi which destroyed homes, farms, roads and other infrastructure, leaving more than 26,000 people homeless. We continue to pray for all affected by climate change as heavy rains and floods continue to cause disaster across their country. Pray for the work of Tear Fund to bring relief there. We pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses and that those parts of Halesworth near and around the Streets of Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Halton Road. Pray for people living in those addresses, they will, um, where things are going well for them, that they will um, turn to you with thanksgiving, turn to church and to neighbours with help and support. Where things are not going so well, may they turn to you, those people turn to you for help and support and uh, receive it from neighbours, friends, organisations, charities, locally. And we pray for businesses based in or serving those addresses that they will thrive and prosper, continuing to be able to contribute to the economy by providing goods, jobs and services. We pray a blessing on Peter Moore and Malcolm, Leslie, Leslie, Cynthia, Jean, Felicity, Janet, Maya, Valerie, Eileen, Jonathan, Francis, Joan, Rachel, was mentioned third, Princess Wales, Kate, Helen, Veronica, Henry, Ginny, John, Tracy, Andrew, any we may know for him, life is a challenge at the moment. We pray a breakthrough in your sovereign grace, providing whatever it is, healing or money, relationship or work, getting out of a relationship, getting out of a job, that these lives may, might be the more peaceful, more fulfilled, more steady, secure, healthful. We pray for those who work with them, walk with them, family, neighbours, friends, volunteers, consultants, managers, advisors. May they know the right word to say in the right time, the right place, the right way, to be true of true assistance and not Jade's comforters. We pray they in their turn will have the support and encouragement that they need. Respite. We thank you for all the good and lives of Phyllis, David, Joyce, Wendy, Joan, Shirley, Sally, Tony, and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those who have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and see no longer, those associated faithful here. And uh, as we remember Isabella Gilmore, we remember all whose uh, years mind falls at this time. As you pray for us that we might. Uh, Maintain, sustain, promote um, all models of ministry under that uh, broad threefold bishop, priest, deacon idea that the church holds to its heart. We 
We ask that according to the promises humanity grant us with them is sharing your eternal kingdom. And we pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of loved one or change in life chances. We ask that we will hear your inspired words spoken through your incarnate mouth by the breath of your spirit and that brings light in our darkness and order in our chaos, fruitfulness in our aridity. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. The colleague for Easter from the book God of Life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube and Facebook.